strength and courage to do that because she has some big visions and help her connect with magic and bring that into her life. And one of her jobs is she's a school teacher at this public school. She's been a teacher for 20 years. And she's like, I'd love to start doing this with my kids. So here in New Zealand, basically on the new year, they switch years, uh, class for years. So she, at the tail end of last year, she started with the kids and they loved it. Uh, this year, you know, she's got the whole year ahead with this class. And so she's really fully taking them through it. And we've been kind of co-creating. So we've, she's created different art projects and writing projects for them to do based around the game and their different journeys and their soul avatar and all these things you okay. create. And so they've been doing it for, um, I'll say about two months now. And so they were cool. like, I was like, oh, I can come in and, and, uh, you know, Melvin wizard can make an appearance for the class and they were so excited. And oh, so yeah. one of them, um, I, you know, this was just this morning, got dressed up in their soul avatars. They had beautiful pictures and paintings they made. They had writing reports. They all showed me, um, they had a special magical song they prepared and they sang for me. And then I went oh. around and answered questions and, you yeah. know, they all share with me what they've done and they, some of them had little gifts for me. And then I took them on a magical meditation journey to the realm of the clouds to the cloud dragon and they all kind of drew and wrote their experiences and we had some fun. So it was, it was really good, but it's really empowering these kids and, and the teachers even finding them doing the breathing techniques on their own and connecting with their animal spirit allies on their own. And they're, they're sharing it with all their friends. So like the whole school now <laughs> outside the classroom oh. with inner realm sanctuary at playground and they're all in their soul avatars and getting super empowered and stuff. So it's just, and her principal is now inviting her to track this so that we can have you know real data around how improving their writing skills, their engagement, their creativity, and and so we can hopefully roll this out to more schools and more classrooms uh, eventually around the world. Is my goal. I just got. Hi, this is Scott Ware, the publisher of Radiance Magazine and the president of Radiance Multidimensional Media. And you're watching interviews on Expansion Network, which could be found um, on Roku. And also they have an app and it's spelled XPN, S-I-O-N, as you can see. I have a very special guest with me today, someone I know a bit, uh, Aaron Michael Pine, an elven wizard. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you. Greetings. It's great to be here. Yes. Thank you for uh, dressing uh, for the occasion. It's, it's helpful. It sets the tone, lets people know what's going on. Now, and I wanna talk about this game you've created where people can, can well, you'll describe what the game is. Um, it's called Inner Realms. Uh, you've given a TED talk on the importance of trees and uh, you're a healer and you're for real. And uh, you're in New Zealand right now taking a lot of beautiful pictures, which we follow you on Facebook and we see. But let's let's just address what's right off the top. Where you're dressed, what does it do for you? And what is the difference between playing dress up as a child, let's say, or for Halloween, versus you being in that beautiful New Zealand environment? And um, and I know you have a staff with you and looks like something else. Yeah, many. <laughs> uh, Magic. By, the, by the way, I just want to tell everybody watching, Aaron is an incredible healer. I've mm -hmm. utilized his services. He's an excellent spiritual coach, um, but I'll let you do a talk. Please please share about your ensemble. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, so this is the, the Elven Wizard um, outfit, if you will, that's basically I've been sort of collaborating, co-creating over many years. Uh, many of these pieces I've collected from different events and, and, and beautiful crafters over the years. And as it's come together and as I've built this new meditation journey game platform, Inner Realms Journey, um, within that, we'll tell you about it in a bit, I, I am the Elven Wizard. Yeah, so there's the, uh, the ad for it and the journal for it <laughs> yep. with lots in there, so we'll talk about that. But within that platform, um, 
you meet me as the Elven Wizard, and I'm sort of your guide and mentor and kind of laying out the framework of the landscape before you and guiding you through these transformational journeys. And as I've been creating this, I've been right embodying it because part of the, the, the mission or the intention with the Inner Realm journey is to help those who go through it to connect with their magical self, their mythical self, their higher self, their spiritual self, whatever that is to you. You know, I know, Scott, you've got some wizard magic in you. <laughs> um, I just went to visit a classroom of kids and they had all kinds of wonderful different what we call your soul avatar forms that they've created and they painted it and drew pictures and stuff. Um, so as I've as I've embodied oh. Elven Wizard, um, I'm living it, um, exemplifying it. And as I've been uh, on my journey here through New Zealand and, and doing beautiful you know, shots for for marketing, social media, sharing stuff. I've been going around as the Elven Wizard, and it's it's been beautiful to see people really connect, and they want to know more, and it kind of it sort of sparks that magic, you know, in their life that they can find the magic, whether they want to be decked out fully or just find little things to bring it into their world. Well, and I know your game is not just a game; it actually is is you have to put yourself into it for it to work. It's it's real life, and I imagine some of that you're imparting to these kids. Yeah, I'd like to know more about that. I'd like to know how did it happen that a classroom allowed a wizard inside and how did they know that your wisdom you're going to share would be well received and would be uh valuable to the kids yeah, yeah. so uh, i connected with a woman here in auckland and she had mm, just a little before me kind of begun her, her spiritual journey in depth and so i shared with her the inner realms journey and did a bit of i'll say spiritual coaching with her and so she's gone through the platform herself and noticed immense transformation it's helped her in every area of her life even finding a wow. new home and helping her with her own self-empowerment and helping her get really clear on her mission and what she wants to do in her life and, and giving her the strength and courage to do that because she has some big visions and help her connect with magic and bring that into her life. And one of her jobs is she's a school teacher at this public school. She's been a teacher for 20 years. And she's like, I'd love to start doing this with my kids. So here in New Zealand, basically on the new year, they switch years, uh, class for years. So she, at the tail end of last year, she started with the kids and they loved it. Uh, this year, you know, she's got the whole year ahead with this class, and so she's okay. really fully taking them through it. And we've been kind of co-creating, so we've she's created different art projects and writing projects for them to do based around the game and their different journeys and their soul avatar and all these things okay. you can create. And so they've been doing it for, um, I'll say, about two months now. And so they were cool. like, I was like, I can come in and, and uh, you know, Melvin Wizard can make an appearance for the class, and they were so excited. And oh, so yeah. and then, um, I, you know, this was just this morning, got dressed up in their soul avatars. They had beautiful pictures and paintings they made. They had writing reports they all showed me. Um, they had a special magical song they prepared and they sang for me. And then I went oh. around and answered questions and, you yeah. know, they all share with me what they've done. And they, some of them had little gifts for me. And then I took them on a magical meditation journey to the realm of the clouds, to the cloud dragon. And they all kind of drew and wrote their experiences and we had some fun. So it was, it was really good. But it's really empowering these kids and, and the teachers even finding them doing the breathing techniques on their own and connecting with their animal spirit allies on their own. And they're, they're sharing it with all their friends. So like the whole school now <laughs> outside the classroom oh. with inner realm sanctuary at playground and they're all in their soul avatars and getting super empowered and stuff. So it's just, and her principal is now inviting her to track this so that we can have, you know, real data around how improving their writing skills, their engagement, their creativity, and, and so we can hopefully roll this out to more schools and more classrooms uh, eventually around the world is my goal. I just got chills up me and uh, my back left side of my head. That, I mean, yeah. when they say, you know, that they're measuring that and looking to see. So what is it these kids, like when a kid goes home and talks to their mom and dad about what, they're, what they've experienced, what, what do you think the parents are gonna see a value or what do you think they'll experience? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's something helping the kids deal with emotions. So when they, they are getting, you know, if the kids, you know, they get worked up, they get stressed out, they get challenged with something, uh, whether it's a test or dealing with other kids, it's giving them ways to, to handle that, handle those emotional surges they get. Uh, uh, it's, it's helping. We, we've grown out of all that stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's helping that. Um, you know, she's finding them, a, a lot of the kids had, when she got the class, were challenged with writing. You know, she could maybe get them to write a sentence on something. And now they do these journeys and this whole avatar, and they're so excited, and they're writing pages and pages about their experiences. Um, it's it's giving them 
empowerment, you know, especially in this world. I mean, New Zealand's not as bad, but, you know, kids are feeling the pressure of everything going on in the world and, and stuff. Yeah. So it's giving them strength and uh, helping them stay in joy and in the magic of life. And this bring is fascinating. That yeah. I, I mean, I know you're coming back to the States soon and yeah. you're bringing the magic uh, back here because yeah. you developed a lot of this game here, I know. And then you went to New Zealand and I'm sure fleshed out a little bit. I'm sure there's a little inspiration over there, a few bushes around, you know, that look good. <laughs> and, uh, I love the pictures you're posting because it's, you know, if you love the Hobbit movies, the Lord of the Rings, I mean, you were at all those locations. A lot of the spots, yeah, I got to go to with some of the tour guides and, you know, fully the Elven Wizard. And, you know, it's funny walking around as the wizard, a lot of people are like, oh, Gandalf. And I'm like, no, no, I'm his friend, the Elven Wizard. But I, I taught Gandalf a lot of things he knows. <laughs> if you'd like to learn the magic, go check out Inner Realm's Journey. <laughs> Now, now that's interesting. So uh, I want to talk to you about talking to Gandalf and and value that could have as a mythical or, a, you know, someone say, well, that's a character, but, or is it? But I want to just go back to the, the school here. So I, I commend you because you developed a game that was so good and has so much wisdom in it that mm -hmm. it changed this teacher's life. And she said, I'm going to bring this to my kids. And she wasn't worried that I was going to get her fired or get her in trouble with any parents or any, any other, you know, teachers or, and, and then you see these benefits, you see the, pr the principal going, you know, there's some cool stuff going on here. Let's measure this. Let's, you know, congrats, kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited. And it's, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting letters, you know, these kids are writing me these thank you letters about their experiences and even giving me little treasures they find. And, you know, I just, I'm keeping this collection. It just, every time I read it, it just opens my heart. And I'm like, all right, uh, yeah, <laughs> onto something here. Like I have to keep going and, and bring this out for people. That, that is a great story. And I'm so glad that is happening. And, you know, so this game that yeah. you've created and I've started it um, and, and then something took me off it for a while, but I'm going to go back to it. And it was, I, I remember it was just, I remember, you know, before the internet and all that, and, and there was, there were some games out there where there was like minimal instruction and you brought your imagination to it. And it said, you're in a cave and you're going here, go there, pick up this. Your game reminds me of that a little bit because most video games is just, you just see it all on the screen and yeah, there's a thousand animators who made all this stuff. And it's, it's essentially, they say the difference between entertainment and fun is entertainment is something someone else has done for you and fun is something you do for yourself and your game feeds into the fun that we do for ourselves because it provide it provides prompts yeah. that take us deeper inside ourselves right. and can, can you expound on that yeah yeah so uh through once you log into the website platform and we've got the app almost on the way too you go through a series of these audio guided journeys and there's some text on there but you're, you're basically listening to me uh, as the elven wizard with music and beautiful soundscapes that guide you through these creative processes and it's actually you using your own imagination or your own you know inner abilities of your own consciousness to connect with your um character your soul avatar your animal spirit ally your inner realm sanctuary <laughs> there's me there's all the different uh elements there mm -hmm. And you go, once you've created sort of your character, which is in a lot of games, right, that's kind of the first thing you do. You create your, your character and your, your superpowers and your special abilities and how you look. So yep. this gives you prompts and you're using your own imagination or creativity to connect with those things. And then there's meditation journeys. And if you go to, uh, if you got up there, innerrealmsjourney.com, you can bring that up too. Um, that's, that's my, uh, oh, yeah, there you go, perfect. Once you've created that, you go to journeys. There's guided journeys to these different realms. And I give you a bit of context, right? You, you say the fire realm. I begin to explain. You see these rivers of magma and these volcanic mountains and the sky full of ash. But it's also invoking your own imagination. It's invoking your own ability to navigate this world. And then you encounter different challenges, different beings, different quests. And, and I, again, I give you a structure, but you get to sort of create the results of how that goes. And empowers you and your own creation well before i i go into and brag about how great a healer you are and all that would you take us on one of those magical journeys right now can i put you on the spot and ask you to do that yeah sure let's do a quick i don't know 10 12 minutes if that i don't know perfect let's do it okay let's do it all right so i invite you to uh, get comfortable there in your chair and close your eyes and yeah go ahead and take a few deep breaths and we call this 
powering up your bio suit. Your bio suit is your human form, right? The human body that is used for your journey. So with those few deep breaths, just really expanding and exploring your own breath, you're actually activating your bio suit. And then bring your focus and your attention down to your root, the base of your spine, your pelvis, and all the nerves there, right? And imagine those nerves expanding out through your legs. You can use just use your intention, your imagination. And those nerves are expanding like roots going down deep into the earth, like a beautiful tree. And as they connect into the earth, they connect with the earth monogrids. This is living life force of the earth that your bio needs. And it's like fuel for your journeys. And as you breathe, you begin to just draw up energy from the earth, like a tree drawing up nutrients, drawing up this earth mana, letting it rise into your body. Letting that earth mana just saturate your entire body. Like you're giving your insides a bath, every cell. And then we're going to do a very brief version of the creating your soul avatar. So you might begin to imagine thinking of a mythical being that you connect with. I'll give you a few examples, but just go with whatever you wish to create. This is your play. Might be a wizard, a priest, a witch, an angel, a fairy, a mermaid, a shape changer, some sort of animal, human hybrid, a mm. king, queen, an elf, a dwarf, a gnome, any combination of those. And just trying to notice what that looks like. What is it wearing? What is it carrying? What does it feel like to you? Is it wise? Is it strong? Is it beautiful? Is it scary? Is it neat and clean or wild and messy? Is it exotic? What qualities does it carry? Just imagining it as best you can. And now I want you to see if you can merge with it that you become this avatar, this soul avatar. And I'm gonna say a few magical spell codes to assist in the merging. In Londali Wandralakum, Jevanarianda Sumbrewana, Ye Londel Andre Ramande when Ye Londuran Nokumbrana. You become one with your soul avatar, it flows into your biosuit, flows into your heart and your mind, into your cells, merging. You become this mythical creature. What does it feel like? Now, as this magical creature, Imagine you're opening a portal before you, a magical gateway. It's gonna take you from where you're at right now to a realm, a special realm we're going to go to today. Where I took the kids earlier, we're gonna go to the cloud realm. And this portal, you step through it. And it brings you out into a landscape full of clouds, cloud-like substance. The mountains are made of clouds. Plants are made of clouds. The path before you is made of clouds. The bushes are made of clouds. 
just making that as real as you can in your mind, in your vision. Creating it. What do the clouds look like? Are they white and fluffy? Are they dark clouds? And you begin to explore this landscape. Explore the cloudy trees and the cloudy path. You make your way down this path, walking as your soul avatar form walks. And as you fly, as you walk, as you're guided, as you move see the path takes you up to a mountain, a cloud mountain, with great clouds swirling around its top, and you make your way up the mountain, and the clouds begin to storm, begin to lightning and thunder around you. Can you make it through? find a way further up into the mountain through the storm. You come through the mountain, through the storm, and you find a great cave. Magical symbols all around it. You see what the symbols look like? You walk in to the cave. The cave's wet, misty, and foggy. Dripping water. You go deeper into the cave, deeper into the cave, noticing cloudy rock walls, wet floor. Mist swirling around you. You begin to hear something deeper in the cave. Something breathing deeply and loudly. And he goes closer, perhaps quietly, slowly approaching. Then you enter a larger chamber, and there is a great dragon sleeping, a great cloud dragon, white, fluffy perhaps, streaks of lightning flowing through it, snoring like thunder, sleeping upon a pile of treasure. And then it awakens, and it sees you there, and it speaks to you. dragon. Perhaps you speak to it. Perhaps it has something for you. Let your own imagination and creativity decide how you experience this encounter as your soul avatar. Yeah, 
more seconds here with the dragon. And when you're ready, you finish your time with the dragon. And make your way back out of the cave. Back to the foggy, wet cave. still stormy when you come outside. And then you make your way back down the trail. Back down to the bottom of the mountain. Back across the landscape, past the cloudy trees and bushes. through that portal back to the human world, back to Midgard, back to your human biosuit. Slowly coming back to an awakened state as you're ready, and seeing if you can still remain as your soul avatar, remain as that mythical self coming into the human journey, to the human experience. Human adventure. Hmm. Very nice. Thank you. That was a quickie. I, um, so, what made you in in that scenario? Like, I've followed guided meditations before that were similar, and then you meet like an angelic being in the middle of the forest. What made you go with a dragon? that was speaking in another language and, and growling and yeah what what was is the strategy there well every so in the game there are countless realms there are realms of angels there's realms of elves there's realms of star beings there's realms of dragons and to me all of the mythical beings across all the cultures uh, including all the new kind of fantasy ideas that are coming up are actual different realms of consciousness. They're different archetypal energies. They're different aspects of our own inner psychology. And so as we can encounter these different beings, whether it's a dragon or angel, we can sort of learn that mana or that wisdom from those different beings. And all these ancient stories, they each have a message within them. They all have a wisdom within them. And so we all have a dragon within us <laughs> in some form or fashion. Yeah. And um, ancient cultures pretty much around the world had dragons in them in some form. And so, yeah, that was that was just a realm that came to me as I'm, I'm going through and creating this, you know, I'm getting different ideas. And I basically, I feel like I travel into these realms first <laughs> and kind of map sure. them out. I have my own personal uh, transformational experience and learning. And then I kind of bring that back and then I draft it out and I draw it out and I record it for people. Um, so this, this cloud run was just a new one that came through. Well, and your message has always been uh, very consistent. You follow your posts. You're definitely, you walk your talk. And I love the fact that there was like a sort of a growling-ish dragon there because as Americans, you know, we protect our kids so much. And um, I don't know how many decades ago we started hearing about the boogeyman or the, you know, the kidnapper, that the odds of being kidnapped are just one in a million, but we brought all our kids out in from the streets from playing with their friends and and we're watching them so much. And um, it's hard as a parent when you're taking in that information about those things to let your kids go out there. Um, right. A friend of mine uh, went to Finland once. He married uh, someone from Finland. And when he visited there, he was, he was like, we're on this hiking trail and there's a cliff and people could just fall. <laughs> like we were, on a, we were even on a guided tour and we, you could just fall. There's no rails, there's no right. signs. And he's like, in America, you know, with the lawyers and with everything, you know, the insurance and you have to cover your everything and you have to have signs everywhere, and you know, because right. because we're not teaching our kids basic stuff a lot of times. And, you know, a lot of times two parents have to work and it's hard to spend that kind of time. So you're it sounds like you're it seems like you're celebrating um, a wisdom that we used to to have around quite a bit. 
Yeah. Some people use the words pagan. Um, but and what would you say to Christians who might fear you coming into their school with with these um, with these exercises? Well, it's it's um, to me it's similar to some of the teachings of of, of Jesus, right? That it's self empowering. He, he he taught love. He taught loving of yourself and loving others, and um, that's that's the core of this is to love yourself and understand who you are and know yourself yeah. and um, know the divine nature that is ourselves and that flows around us. That we're all creations of of this of God, whatever that is to you. Yeah. Um, you know, this is teaching people to find that creative power within them. Um, you know, I feel like each of us as, as children of God um, have a creative gift. We each have a gift that we were born to bring to this world. Yeah. And through a lot of mentality and cultural programming modern day, many of us suppress that gift. Many of us get, you know, we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not this enough. Um, just kind of stay in line and just kind of do what you have to to get by to kind of just survive and so many people never really fulfill their potential and their gift and I feel like the gift that we're each given is, is unique and beautiful and part of the, the greater puzzle or the greater tapestry to uplift humanity to bring more love and connection and healing and, and transformation to this world and so my, my intention here is to empower whether it's the kids or adults to come back to themselves and remember who, who they are, what their creative gifts are, what their power is, and not be suppressed by external things and find out what's within them and bring that gift that is, to me, divinely, magically, sacredly given to us and learn to express that, you know. That's amazing, yeah. Um, I, I get that, and, and can I tell you what, uh, what the dragon told me? Yes, yes, I'd love to hear. Sure. <laughs> so... It's it's funny because you know in the Lord of the Rings we saw the dragon that was also on treasure and, and that's kind of a definitely a mythical archetypal thing and right. I learned something just in that in that exercise I learned something about myself as well because many times most times in life the danger is not real yeah and um, and frequently we get stopped at that for decades for years or decades there you know people. Or I'll speak for myself in not wanting to do something because, oh, that's too big. I can't do that. I can't do that because, and I have a, a dragon at the threshold of the thing, okay. metaphorically speaking, right. some dragon, some beast I'm afraid of. Yeah. And usually it has to do with, like you said, worthiness or self love or self, you know, beliefs. Um, and what I'm learning and still learning is that those things, you just push through them. Yeah. I think Terrence McKenna said something like anytime he experienced um, a beast or, or something guarding his way, once he pushed through it and realized there's actually nothing there except a feather bed to land on. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I love that. Uh, so it, you, what you thought was an abyss is actually a feather bed. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so what this dragon, right. what we were communicating, not necessarily in English words, but which was, I got that he's just there and i'm walking by and he gets he he said yes um you do understand and in fact because you're not also being greedy and trying to steal some of this treasure then you won't have any problem with me either just stand in your power stay in your lane stay in your path and pull to pull to you what's important to you energetically and otherwise and that treasure wasn't you know wasn't of interest so i didn't have to tangle with the lower vibe aspects of that dragon but uh but at the same time i love the voice i love the language you were bringing through um can you talk a little bit about that language and light language and what that is and how it's different or the same as talking in tongues like a lot of christians do okay. yeah 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 so um yeah it's, a lot of people call it light language or the speaking in tongues and and there's different theories right it's 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 letting spirit or spirituality or the divine speak through you and, you know, I always kind of joke that um, the divine or the spiritual realm don't necessarily speak English <laughs> or Spanish or <laughs> perhaps they can, but they, I feel some of their, their wisdom and, and, and the complexity of what they can transmit cannot be fully encapsulated. And our, our language would be limiting to them, I'm sure. And I, I also, I'm sure a lot is coming through that we don't need to understand with the brain because there's so much more intelligence than our brain where in our field. Yeah, in our field, in our body, in our heart. Um, 
to me, it's, it's like nature, right? Nature has so many languages of color and light and different sounds, and it's constantly mm. fluctuating. And you can go out right into nature and the, hear the birds, the ocean waves, and it, it has an effect on you. You're like, oh, you know, calms you down. And so as I speak these languages, you know, for myself, it's very empowering for myself, and it's, it's helped me in a lot of ways. And also, I see the results of people. They, people feel it. It helps clear things. and helps them remember their power and, and their own connection. And for me, as I've been creating the Inner Realms journey, and there's all these different realms, you know, there's the fire realms, ice realms, elven realms, da, 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 da. I bring through different languages for that realm. And I feel like, and they each have their own sort of tonality and quality, right? That dragon one was a little bit harder and it's a little more intense on my throat, but you know, I wanted to, to give it to you guys. <laughs> um, but- Thank and, you, and I, appreciate, I appreciate your work on that, yes. Gladly. <laughs> And it helps, it, it helps um, I'll say, transmit the energy, transmit the wisdom and the, the experience and help you connect with that particular realm. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. I, I've seen more and more people are opening up that language. And for me, speaking it, it really empowers me. I feel a whole another level of um, strength come through, and it's even come through in song. So there's a few with song, and there'll be more of that coming through as well uh, in, in a musical kind of format. So what do you tell people when, because anyone can do it. In fact, anyone listening, if yep. I have found that when you went, like when I hear you do light language, it, mm -hmm. it sort of like brings it up for me and I'm going to start doing it. Yes. What would, <laughs> yep. tell, what would you tell people about that and, and what benefits can they get from that? Yeah. So um, I have on Udemy, I have a light language 30 day class that takes you through different exercises and helps you understand how it works and different practices to get it going. Um, I think that's on the, uh, the Aaron Michael Pine site. There's a link to that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it kind of works differently for everyone. Some people find right different restrictions and, you know, there's obviously a bit of shyness and is this kind of weird? And am I just making this up? <laughs> Those are the common things. Um, and yes, you are making up, you're kind of making up everything. So just flow with it and, you know, sit in your own and sit in the car, whatever you need to do and just kind of play with sound, you know, and, and yeah. you're, you're working to sort of let go of your mind. You kind of go into a meditative state with it and it starts to flow through and you'll feel it. I mean, it'll open up your throat chakra. When I first started doing it, it was really stretch my vocal cords in ways I never used before. And it strengthened my voice. I used to always be super quiet, super shy, uh, very, very hard to hear. And as I've gone through this process, my human voice has gotten clearer. I feel more precise with it. Um, yeah. And I can go into speaking these other languages and I feel that power empowerment. Um, I use it in healings. You've experienced that a bit when I'm doing energy work to help people, um, it can clear stuff out of the field. Uh, and basically what it's really doing is it's, it's sparking those who hear it, it's sparking their soul. It's, it's reminding their soul that they can express themselves, whatever they are, whoever they are, however they are. And that that is, that is welcome here, that is safe here and that is needed here and now in this world for your essence to come through. So you know, it, it's cool. so it's so good to work with you because you're you're not pretentious. Obviously, in fact, you're quite unassuming. A uh, person wouldn't necessarily know very quickly that you have all this wisdom and information. There's some testimonials flashing by on the screen here that people can understand and know, you know, okay. what uh, the, the talents you have and, and how you've helped these people. Yeah. Um, I also noticed, and well, I, I already pulled up you gave a TED talk, a TEDx talk on trees, yeah. a message from the trees. So tell us, what is the message from the trees? Yeah, the message from the trees is <laughs> that a couple of core components. One is that in nearly every mythology or religion or culture around the world, there was a tree at the core of it. Um, sometimes the tree is more apparent. Sometimes it's a little more in the background. But there's always this tree and it generally has this representation of the the fabric of reality and the interconnected nature of reality um you know the trees all interconnect through the roots and the branches and also that the roots represent our past and represent maybe some of our challenges we've gone through so in in my game the roots are where the darker realms are that are a little bit you know a little scarier a little more challenging up in the top in the branches are the realms of light the, the our dreams our visions our goals where we're, we're trying to head to and those magical things we're trying to bring into our life. In the trunk, uh, the center of the tree is sort of our, our day to day life. It's the human world, it's the human reality uh, that we're, we're drawing forth above and below into this space now. Again, and it's also right in our body. We kind of, our nervous system is very tree like. And we are connected with trees, ancient cultures around the world. 
honored trees. There was always trees in sacred groves. Uh, yep. Communities were built around trees at many star and many parts of the world. Um, and, and we know more and more how much trees are important to our general human survival. I mean, between oxygen and lumber and food and so much, we, we depend on trees. And sure. also find how much trees actually scientifically communicate, how much they're sharing information and chemicals uh, supporting each other through their roots uh, and connected with the, mush the mushroom networks underground. Um, so they're, they're super vital and I feel like that's uh, part of our evolution is bringing the trees back and helping, you know, reforest the, the forest and all we've, we've cut down so that as they come back, we reconnect with our power and our magic as well. I feel like they're our, they're our family. <laughs> so that's the... Absolutely. Absolutely. Hugging trees, sitting against them is, is yeah. so great. Being with them. Yeah. Oh, it's just so calming. It's like it meditates you, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I was thinking about th that picture of the tree and we're, you were talking about magic. And the fact is, I mean, even Albert Einstein said in life, either you see no miracles or everything's a miracle. Yeah. And, and they sort of means the same thing. If you're just consistent, but we tend to be irrational and inconsistent as humans when we're operating unconsciously. Yeah. But we operate consciously, the, the sweetness of life has magic and the sweetness of life is those things where our soul i just feel is so in alignment with whether it's a, a moment or a leaf floating on a tree or something that happened in your life that shifted things yeah. and i feel like the more we let go and surrender and allow our intuition to take over and let the brain just just go rest a little bit and let the soul take us where it wants to go and and the magic and the fun is, is there but you put the magic first, it seems like. Is that right? Yeah, that's been my, my path, my journey, especially this year uh, being here in New Zealand is, is to follow that magic. And, and yeah, like you said, put that first. How can I create magic? How can I be magic? How can I share the magic? How can I inspire magic in others? Um, mm. day, day trusting that flow and that potentiality. I used to always feel younger, like, oh, uh, where's the magic at? <laughs> Why is it life more magical? Well, and then they realize like we we create it we generate it we see it we feel it and that allows it to blossom as as adults we can see the magic happens in that teacher's life being transformed so much that she wants to introduce it to students transformations are happening over there so that's magic what what, what other magic have you encountered lately in relation to the game yeah um well as i've been Gosh, so many things. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's a recent experience. So I was, uh, went through by this beautiful lake and, um, uh, South Island, New Zealand. And yeah. I was going along, I found, um, a, a dead hawk that had been on the side of the road. So, and I love hawks and eagles and big birds. So I pulled over and blessed it, put it off, you know, off the road. So I want to get, keep it and swished. And I, I felt like I could take a few feathers. So I took a few feathers put them in my, my bag, carried on. A few days later, I got to a city, Queenstown, and, and found out about this sort of little um, open mic gathering where people could share a poem or a story or something. And, and I got to connect with some locals and had a good time. And so I was chatting with one woman and she was telling me she's had this vision. She's connecting with the Phoenix and the Phoenix energy. And then she was telling me about her vision with this the same lake that I was just at and her yeah. building a, a sanctuary there, a, a beautiful place for people to come and heal and retreat. And I said, oh, was it this lake? And I said, oh, I just found a hawk feather there, which hawk is, you know, it's pretty close to a phoenix as you're going to get in this world. Sure. So I gifted her one of those hawk feathers to remind her of the phoenix energy in, in that particular lake where she has this vision. And she was so touched that it, like, that, that feather came around from that place and that hawk right there. And just, I feel like really kind of gifted her that strength and that magical support that, okay, yeah, this vision is true and I'm going to, make my way on that that's the key support knowing the universe supports us isn't that right mm -hmm. definitely that there's so much support there's so much magic but all these realms all these beings are there to support you they want to help see you succeed and, and why, do we, your why do we block out that influence mm. a lot of it's the rational mind i mean told that that's just imaginary or that's nonsense or that's make-believe or that's not real and uh, pretty much every indigenous culture around the world <laughs> connected with these beings 
And I feel like there's more and more sort of evidence-based stuff, you know, showing that these, these realms exist. And, you know, more and more people are, are awakening to this and realizing the power of these spirit beings and, and honoring them and uh, letting them come play. It's like <laughs> everyone has a party, <laughs> a whole crew around them. As you start to open, you start to realize. And, you know, my, my game really helps support that, helps you understand that and, and, and develop that. And it's like a network, just like we have our human networks. You know, I've, I'm connected with you and I've got my friends of this and da, 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 all these people I know from different things. Uh, you have different spirit teams around you and they each have their own sort of gifts and insights and wisdom. And as you go through these journeys, you reestablish those relationships with them. Yeah, you just made me think that, you know, there's only so many times you can do the nativity scene play, right? <laughs> At Easter, you know, there, there's a lot of those things going on. The three wise men come up. But what about what about talking to your own burning bush? Yeah. And, yeah. and metaphorically speaking, you don't have to burn a bush, but why, why not have those experiences ourselves, right? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's been this right kind of idea that it's only these handful of people through time have had these spiritual experiences. <laughs> only this, this yeah. select handful. <laughs> and right. um you know, and that's great. And I'm sure they, they did in their own way. And, you know, I think, I think humanity is in a place where we can use a few more of those, <laughs> more than just a few handful of people. You know, we've, we've definitely oh, yeah. had some challenges going on right now in the world. I think everyone agree. Um, so I'm inviting everyone to have their own magical experiences and, and bring that, right? All those people, Moses, the Jesus, the Buddhas that had those, they brought that wisdom. They brought that heart and that love and, and tried to support others and uplift others. And yeah. And that's you know. the message, the message of, of radiance and you at, at some level, maybe it's not, maybe it's different um, language, right. but that the Christ consciousness is alive and well and ready to be activated. And, and yeah. what does that mean to you, if anything? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's, um, that's the capacity for us to be open hearted. And, and, and that open heart is ourselves loving all of ourselves, loving our own journey, our ups and downs, our, our good and our bad, you know, everything that we are and embracing that in the wholeness. And that sort of like brings the puzzle <laughs> of ourselves together. Mm. Once that's really in a solid place, then we can share that gift with others and others can see that possibility, that potential for themselves to start to love themselves. And it's sort of like, you know, one candle can light many candles. As you come into your own love of all that you are, whatever that is, <laughs> or each unique, right. right? Then you can uh, shine fully in your power and your grace and you you flow with life and you trust life and you trust yourself and you trust what comes to you and you you can flow with it <laughs> this this is so interesting i'm going to ask you about your relationship with your daughter in a, in a moment but first i want to just say that with with games with these games like kids left to their own devices will come up with games and they do and they're fun but when you add the dimensions and the archetype that uh that you're bringing to it it's almost like okay, now we're not in the playground, we're in a village and mm. the shaman has come over and is working with the kids as, as they're allowed to do or right. whoever, whomever. And they're, they're giving the kids more so that they learn more at an earlier age as opposed to protecting your kids from certain things or certain elements of life or pretending that we live forever in physical form or yeah. pretending that we're not eternal beings in soul form. Right. Um, it's just... I'm glad that school let, uh, let you do that because it, it just, I can already, I can feel it. I can, yeah. I can feel when you're saying that how beautiful it is and expansive. Yeah. Um, what is it about New Zealand you think that's a little different from American schools? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you gonna be able to walk into a school over here and do that? <laughs> Perhaps some. <laughs> there are, there are some... the teacher in first. Teacher has to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some schools that are doing meditation, you know, very more simple meditation, just the breathing yoga. that is happening, some yoga. So I feel like they're, they're starting to open up. They're seeing the benefits of that for kids. So this, what I'm bringing is sort of the next level of that. Um, I'm hoping that's a good kind of first step. And then now we can go to the realms, right? Um, you know, look, part of it was the teacher. It's a smaller school. It's, it's outside of Auckland, kind of a little bit rural. So, um, you know, my friend, the teacher has a little more freedom to, to explore and do different things here. Uh, okay. that there's a little bit of uh, sense of magic because Lord of the Rings was filmed here and it was such a huge thing for all of New Zealand. I mean, pretty much any, anyone you meet here that's a New Zealander, either they had some part in the movie or, you know, somebody they know was part of the movie. So there's a little, 
not that everyone's into to it per se, but sure. there's a little more acceptance of it. And, uh, you know, I feel a little more at ease walking around here as a wizard. They're like, oh, it's just you know, Lord of the Rings fan, maybe, or somebody trying to be Gandalf. <laughs> you know, yeah. the state will be, we'll see how it goes there. But um, I think there's just that little more openness here uh, to certain things like that. And it's great about you. You you help bring out people's inner wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's also cool here is the Maori, which were the, the indigenous culture that lived here for about uh, 800, 900 years before European settlers came here. Mm. And, you know, they definitely went through some rough times um, but I feel their culture is, while it was definitely suppressed, it's being allowed and, um, tr they're trying to sort of bring it back in different ways into the public. Nice. You know, it's like kids are learning some of the Maori languages, you know, a lot of the Maori names for places are still common, you know, the different beaches, mountains, parks still have the Maori names. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the Maori has a lot of beautiful, you know, they have some dragons and they have some elves in their myths and stories and they talk about the mana of the land and, and the, the mana within us. So that's interwoven in the culture and is and, and are working on trying to bring that more and more to the culture so it's not lost. So I feel like there's that essence of that magic there too. So how has being a father affected your development of the game and how has being the wizard that you are affected being a father? Yeah, <laughs> great question. And what, is, and what does your daughter think about all this? Right. <laughs> well, it's funny, you know, in, in ways she uh, helped develop this. Um, so before I had the game, you know, I would often tell her stories, but, you know, bedtime stories. And a lot of times I would sort of make up these stories. And, you know, I, as her dad, the wizard and on his dragon and and she's the, uh, the elven star princess. Ah. You know, and she would have her magic things. How did you develop the game? What is she like, 25 years old or something? Yeah, she's nine. <laughs> nine, nine, okay. And um, so I would tell these these stories and I would take her onto the tree of life and she would meet Mr. Green and and she would he would give her a token to go to different worlds, the mermaid world, which she loves, or the angel world, the elf. And we would go on these journeys and I would kind of lead it, but she would occasionally put an input. Oh, yeah, I saw this or this happened or could there be this? And and so we kind of play together. Um, so that was part of, in a way, I didn't, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was part of me building this. And then um, actually the last time I got to be with her, which it's going to be soon again, um, I was working on the logo for this, um, the, which is the, the tree of life there, the person in meditation. And there's all these little realms, all the spheres on there. Mm. And um, so she stayed up one night and helped me design this. And she was giving me ideas and, oh, I like that color and like, go oh, try that and stuff. So it's beautiful. You know, she was part of that too. Yeah. And, um, you know, she's heard my development of it. When I get back to her here in a few weeks, I'm excited to kind of more deep dive within her and, and we'll see if she has lots of ideas, but I don't want to force her on her. She, she loves it. Hopefully, you know, I have other ideas of how she can play and, and be part of this too. So let me ask you, what, what would you say to people who are, who just think, Oh, I don't know about magic in my life. That just sounds over the top, unreal, um, uh, fanciful, not something that's, I could use in society, you know, I need to do this or that, or I need to make a living, you know, or I need to take care of an illness, or I need to um, provide for my family, or I need, you know, or wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say to them about magic and, and the kind of magic you're talking about? Mm. So ultimately magic is about finding your own power and your own strength and courage in whatever it is you're doing. You know, all the things, you know, I've got staff and I've got flutes and drums and, and crystals and whatever else, you know, I have or other people, those are tools that are exciting and empowering to you. Magic could be, um, you know, your car, your yeah. whatever, anything that empowers you and excites you and helps your golf you. club, your golf club. Right. And, and part of its perception and imagination and, if, and it's scientifically shown, right? If you can imagine something, you have a better chance of creating it. All the visionaries that Einstein and stuff, there's an imaginative quality happening first to come up with these ideas and solutions that then get implemented into physical reality. Any great idea that's, you know, changed humanity was, was ideas first and oftentimes dreams, you know, many people have these amazing dreams and, and that's where their solution or their idea came from. And then they find ways to bring it into reality and that's magic at its core. It's having that vision that experience and all this stuff, you know, all this stuff in teaching the inner realms journey helps you develop your imaginative capacity and begin to correlate it, right? You saw the dragon. I just I just took you to a dragon. I didn't say anything else about the dragon. Your own imagination and your own wisdom started to piece together what that meant, what that meant to you. And now you have that as a reference point 
as you go out into your work, as you deal with challenges at work, as you know, you deal with challenges in your health or relationships, you, that dragon might come back and you're, oh yeah, that's right. I don't have, I can deal with the dragon. Here's a dragon in front of me, <laughs> you know, yeah. here's an unexpected challenge. And what do I do with the dragon? Like, how can I apply that here? So it gives you a framework that you can then apply. And as you do it once and you see it work, you're like, okay, now I can handle another dragon and another, and you start to flow through those dragons and those dragons aren't slowing you down anymore. And then you start building up your power and you start fulfilling your vision and your quest and you can start to live more abundantly, more joyously, whatever that is for you um, in all areas. I love it. The core of, awesome. of the magic. You know, you may not be dressed up as a wizard as myself, <laughs> maybe in a few years, who knows? <laughs> but right, it's, so it's bringing the magic. It, it sounds to me like whatever your intuition is telling you, honor that, listen to it. Let it happen. If you see a stick on the ground and it's speaking to you, speak back and, and hold it and, and, you know, use it, wield it. Um, yeah. Isn't that right? Isn't that yeah. So, yeah. And just like think about a kid and, and I invite everyone to, you know, a lot of us have blocked those memories to sit and think about what you did as a kid. You know, whether you, I remember playing with Legos and I would build these huge castles and all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of what I do now. I build these big complex <laughs> systems, right? That were magical. Yeah. Um, yeah, you might be a kid, you love to run around the woods and you, you picked up sticks and that was your sword. So it's, it's applying that imaginative, creative perception to your reality, you know, work. Um, a friend of mine who um, got to kind of test and develop the Realms journey, um, he created his soul avatar, was this kind of mystical king guy, right? And so he has a job, he uh, manages condos and maintenance and uh, operations for a cool condo complex. And he's dealing with all kinds of challenging and stressful situations, all oh, the water broke and this and da 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 all the time. It was like a lot, you know, and, and so he started to go into work as himself, you know, on his drive to work, he's like, I'm the king and he connected with earth mana and he felt empowered. And then as dragons or challenges came at him through the day, he's like, oh yeah, this boom, 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 boom. And he just felt like a whole different person at the end of the day. He wasn't like, you know, dead at the end of the day and stressed out, right. you know, he felt strong and like, yeah, I can handle this. And uh, yeah, I'm the king, right? no problem. <laughs> It's so your game is is empowering, as is your philosophy. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, more and more classes, more and more kids can do it. More and more adult kids can do it yeah, and, just, and just relax and, and let them go. And I um, I understand it's only like nine. Is it nine ninety nine a month for the game? Yep. So you can go on there. You can sign up for free and you go through the initial training, which was you got a, a tiny snippet of that today. But um, full training and you get four journeys for free so everyone can check that out oh, okay. and then, um yeah then there's a monthly 9.99 um there's a yearly i think that's 88 right now and then we're also going to be releasing some packages in the future too 9.99 for what's probably going to happen to you as you engage is you're going to shift yeah you're going to have shifts deeper into yourself you're going to realize more fun for 9.99 that's a really good deal yeah, yeah thank you and i feel free you know, yeah free yeah and, you know, I've been teaching, you know, spirituality, meditation. I've been learning myself and teaching for over 18 years and uh, with many wonderful people from many different traditions. And all of that, plus all the stuff I've developed in my own journeys, is, is, is put into this. <laughs> so you're getting really an immense amount of training and wisdom, um, all in this fun, interactive experience. I mean, that's what these testimonials are, are alluding to or, or speaking about directly. And... And if I would say to people, people watching this, if at this point you would like to work with Aaron one-on-one -on -one as a coach, um, yeah. as a spiritual guy, as a coach, I recommend it. Right. Um, what should people look for? So they should go to AaronMichaelPine.com. Yep. Yeah. So that's more my, my personal page. And if you want to reach out and work with me individually, it's on there. Um, so you can do the individual sessions on there. And then there's also InnerRealmsJourney.com, which is for the, uh, the app and the game. Right. And, you know, if you're really like going for some major transformation, really ready to transform your life, you can reach out for some private sessions and I can also get you connected into the game because you can use the game to support the individual sessions and we kind of weave it together. So that's your sort of homework <laughs> in between our, our sessions together. And do you encourage us to practice our light language? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I let it flow. With yourself, um, I've brought it into business. Uh, to business meetings, uh, to a relationship oh. and the friendships. Um, you know, for example, one time I was with, I was working with my assistant 
And I can't remember the exact, but there's a big challenge where we're really trying to figure out how to deal with some problems that came up. And I kind of realized we weren't really getting anywhere. I said, let's just stop. And I spoke some light language and it just shifted both of our perceptions and helped us really connect with our power. And then the ideas came through. Oh yeah, okay, let's do it. And it just all experience, the whole energy around it. Um, you know, because it's, yeah, it's not, go ahead. No, <laughs> I've, uh, similar with a relationship with a partner, you know, maybe we're, we're going through some, some challenges, some sticky points between us. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's, let me pause here. And I go light language and it just, again, shifts the energy, that clear stuff and helps us kind of come back to our center and power in our, our hearts. It does, because not only is it the energy of it, mm -hmm. but it's also the act of it, because once you get past, I mean, initially someone might go, that sounds silly. That's, that's just silly. And, but once you get past and you understand what it is, that it is not, that it is actually a higher form of communicating, a higher form of channeling, if you will, um, that you don't have to understand at a cerebral level, the way this brain likes to understand things and likes to figure things out. That's an addiction. We don't need to figure things out as much as we think we do. The brain keeps telling us we need to. Okay. Guess who's telling us that? Right? Yeah. yeah. So to let it flow and let that happen, I can definitely see where, you know, you start doing that and the partner is going to go, okay, let me, let me just close my eyes on this. I, I, I get what they're doing. They're going there and right. it immediately elevates you. Yeah. I, I can totally see that. Yeah. I mean, we can, we easily all get stuck in the mire of whatever's going on, you know, the trauma, the triggers, the fear, yes. all that stuff. And we can, most people get lost in it and, and blow up or, or lose it. Right. And sure. so, yeah, it allows you to sort of pause and, let's step out of that and see the higher picture, reconnect with our power, our spirit, our soul, our heart, and then reevaluate, look at the situation again from that place. And from that place, a lot can change very quickly and powerfully mm -hmm. and alchemize into something that's gonna really be supportive for everyone. And it's not just a you win, I win, or nobody wins. It's like, how, how does this actually empower everybody, ourselves and, and maybe the world and whoever else is involved in a reality? Yeah, because if someone's going to win, or if you think you want to win, then you're definitely not in your heart in that yeah. moment. You're yeah. in the ego, the ego mind. And yeah. to get out of it where it's just win-win for everyone is a beautiful thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's it. What's a we need more of? <laughs> totally. Well, thanks for helping to spread it and continue. I, I, I don't want to see you not dress like this ever okay <laughs> yeah i think i need to get a little bit lighter weight cloak for the uh, summertime this one's wool <laughs> oh yeah you're <laughs> gonna get a, a summer cloak and then maybe a summer hat but <laughs> okay I'm, I'm gonna tell you one more little secret um so when i imagined myself i was going back uh, in that scenario earlier on i imagined myself as a wizard like a gandalf type wizard but there was also a wolf mm, nice and i'm like well which am i and i go you know what the wolf is an aspect of the wizard so they're both me so right. I went back and forth and that's just what was happening. That was what was playing out. And I, I went with it Perfect. and I got into the wolf. I was one with this wolf with these piercing eyes, nice. um, which didn't mean it was mean. It just, it just was intense. Right. And the wizard was a little less. So he let the, the intense part of him come out in the wolf. Mm. And I just imagined, oh, and I was walking in a robe and I was like, oh yeah, I guess these wizards walk in. I don't know if they have pants. I don't know if they wear pants, but I'm in a robe now. So that was, I was feeling, <laughs> and, but mostly I was, it, it was like frozen in time, like one of those statues, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it just felt good. Look, I did feel it. I felt it out as the wizard. I felt it out as, as the wolf and it felt really good and it was fun. And heck, you know, <sighs> I, I know this is all illusion. I know it's all playground, so we can play it any way we want. Why not, why not have intention and build it and just go, I'm gonna create magic. I'm gonna go out today for a hike and I'm gonna talk with trees and I'm gonna feel the magic and get in tune with it all and let the magic happen. Is that, how, what would you add to that? That's it, yeah. Like have your times where you can play with it. Like I said, go out to nature, playing around in your house. And then that helps you. It's like practice, like building that muscle, that imaginative magical muscle <laughs> within you. And then you're able to more easily carry it into those situations where you maybe have to be a little more ordinary, your work or, you know, maybe a group meeting or whatever that becomes more part of you. It's like you've built that magic up and you can bring that into any experience you have and, and, and watch, watch the magic happen. <laughs> hey, well, for radiance, would you write an article about working the magical muscle? Is, is your magical muscle flabby? Right. Pumping up, you know, right. 
<laughs> that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, That'd I love great. it. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. And thank you for doing this interview, Aaron. That would be an honor. Oh, it's fun. You know, Give you a, a little magical blessing here from the realm of the elves. Here in New Zealand. All the realms are excited and joyous to reconnect and resupport humanity in the remembrance of their own power and their capacity to heal and transform this planet back into paradise to restore its magic within them and all around them may the magic of all the realms flow through you hmm. amen <laughs> oh. and so it is and so it is <laughs> um when you when you speak like that and you do that voice it i love it because it sounds so ancient and like it it has a vibration that connects me and I feel myself going through a portal and going through time, through dimensions. That's it. <laughs> or, or it coming this way. I'm not sure which, but. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Omnidirectional. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for that. Um, I love that mug you're uh, drinking from. That's really cool. A dragon council <laughs> every morning. Nice. Yeah. Well, there they are right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so people can reach you at AaronMichaelPinePYNE.com or InnerRealmsJourney.com uh, or your Facebook page, Aaron Michael Pine, P-Y-N-E. Thank you again. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Blessings to everyone. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. This was the, what was this? Interviews. I'm kind of <laughs> lost. Interviews show on Expansion Network. I'm Scott Ware of Radiance Magazine and Radiance Multidimensional Media. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.